Please remain standing and turn to the bulletin to follow the printed order of service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, let us run you with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have never offended you, and justly deserve your general and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray to you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, and their sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. reading for the first Sunday after Christmas is taken from Exodus the 13th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate me all the first four. Whatever is the first to open the Lord among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and to your fathers, and you shall give it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all the first open that open the womb. All the firstborn of your animals are, that are male shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with the lamb, for if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. 
Every firstborn of man among their sons shall be re you shall redeem. And when a time to come to your, your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, be strong. By a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that are first over the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Colossians, the third chapter. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these firm love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you indeed were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ rule in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns, and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand once again for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came to the, in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought the, in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now that you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. My eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light for revelation of the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed him and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. <coughs> she did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak, with, uh, to, him about, to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of his Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee in their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to thee, O Christ. We join together now to confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
Got already? <laughs> what? Hot Wheels said, okay, you got hot That's cool. What did you get? You can't remember Mama. Oh, I should have Mama. She, she remembers, yeah. She can still get the receipt, probably. <laughs>
So for that, we're grateful. In his name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, you may be seated. Thank you. Anybody remember what you got when you were five? Yeah, some people do. Yeah, I, I think if I thought about it long enough, I can. Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I got a, I got a bicycle. And the first couple of times I rode that bike was a mitigated disaster, but I learned. I conquered it. Anyway, let's worship the Lord with our, our servant hymn number three hundred and sixty-eight. Because now you can get your ticket to boarding passing before you leave home. 
you still had to get through security more waiting. And you rush to get through security, make sure you get your flight, you get through, and now it's more waiting for the time to board your plane. All we do is wait. I read this week, and this is astounding, the average person spends five years of their life waiting. That's a lot of time. Five years. Those are years, those are minutes, hours of waiting you can never get back. You know, St. Paul says, redeem the time, or make the most time, because as that day grows here. Day How about redeeming the time, making the most of our time? Why? Because uh, once those minutes and hours and days are gone, we don't get them back again. There's a waiting, there's a use of time for waiting that is almost unredeemable, but the fact is waiting is, is part of life. I mentioned, I'd share with you a few moments ago from Joshua 21:45 that all of God's promises come to pass. You want to think of how long the people, the Hebrew people, the people of Israel, waited for God to fulfill his promise to send a savior. They had all kinds of uh, pictures and pieces of the puzzle to show them the point of time and location where Messiah was to be born, and they waited. And they waited. I, I think we're some, however, maybe had given up hope, but God had his faithful remnant who would cling to the promises of God in the most dire of situations during the slavery years, during the uh, Babylonian captivity, during the Assyrian captivity, through all kinds of times and seasons, they would cling to the promise of God, searching scripture, longing to when Messiah would come. The people of Israel were promised Messiah. Just going back, for example, to Abraham. Do you realize that from Abraham to the birth of Jesus was about 2,000 years? a long time. All during those 2,000 years, God's people remained faithful to God and would cling to his promise. Now, interestingly, when Jesus to us, about 2,000 years, makes me wonder if something wonderful would have happened soon, perhaps. But think of just going back to the first promise to Abraham. God said to Abraham, he said, uh, he said I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. Through your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And God, you remember, God called Abraham outside and said, look up and count the stars if you're able. That's how many your descendants will be. Through your seed, Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, when, when he used that word seed, for your offspring, it was one singular. Paul makes that clear in Galatians 3.16, which is Christ. Through Christ, all nations of the earth will be blessed. That promise was given to Abraham 2,000 years before the birth of Jesus. Again, that promise was reiterated at various times in various ways. A thousand years later, it was given to David that from his seed, God would raise up a king for Israel that will reign up in his house forever. We know that was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the people, the remnant, the faithful of God kept faith alive because they believed and trusted the word of God. They daily searched the scriptures. God had made a promise to Abraham. That promise came to pass in the fullness of time. Think of all that happened uh, from Abraham on. The, the, he journeyed down from the land of Canaan, though he never had. They, we had the slavery years, the conquest years, the years of the, uh, of the establishment of the monarchy, worship, all that had taken place before Christ came. Think of all that happened in the life of Israel those many 2,000 years. Yet God was faithful and kept his promise. So I want you to turn now. I explain where we're going with this right now because God's plan is very complicated. I'm trying to make it keep it simple for the sake of time. But God made a covenant, made a promise to Abraham. And you and I are living this side of the life of Christ, seeing the uh, God's plan, his promise coming to fruition. Let's go to our gospel reading on page 3 to Belinda. Or if you want to use your Bible, that's fine. Um, I think Lutherans, by the way, should bring their own Bible to church, but that's, that's just a funny course that I have. But we're going to our gospel reading, St. Luke, beginning verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Why don't you stop there a minute? Look at Simeon. This is probably was a common name. But this one man living in Jerusalem, we know where he was. He is living in Jerusalem. Notice the two words that Luke uses to describe him. Righteous and devout. 
righteous and devout. You know, there are probably a lot of people in those 2,000 years from Abraham on, that people, godly people, you could describe as righteous and devout. So I don't think that was unique to Simeon. But he was righteous and is devout. Here's something else he shared with all his fellow Jews who waited for the coming of Messiah, waiting for the consolation of Israel, waiting for the redemption of Israel. Well, here's something that was different about Simeon in verse four, uh, 25. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. That was, that was unique. That was, not, that was the exception and not the norm. The Spirit of God would come upon a person that God had chosen to do his will. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, was upon him. Now, the good news is for us because Christ lived, died, rose again, and ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit not only is upon us, but in us after Pentecost. But the Holy Spirit was upon him. Let's look at verse 26. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. I want to think, what a unique promise that was. You will not die until you've seen the Christ. That's an incredible promise. That, that's where something is different that separates Simeon from others who are righteous and devout. Not everyone had to think in 2,000 years. Think of how many people lived their whole lives longing, yearning for that day when Messiah would come. And did, were not around. They, they came, they lived their entire lives without seeing the promise fulfilled. But I have good news for you. They, like us, share the blessings of Christ because his, his blessings, the blessings of the cross, the blessings of the empty tomb, extend backward retroactively to cover all of God's Old Testament covenant people. And they extend forward to us. So the blessings of the cross go either way in history. Though they did not witness the coming Messiah, they did not miss out on the blessings of Christ. Which is good. Now, I, I stated a couple of years ago, I, I wrestled with questions here. We had one of our members who was bringing the building with hospice care. And it's like he was a Cubs fan. And, and he was a lifelong Cubs fan. And he died, by the way, on January 1 of 2016. Yeah. Anyways, it was right after the Cubs won the World Series. Now think about it. Imagine if you lived 90 years your whole life, all you want is, just once, God, I'd love to see the Cubs win the World Series. Yeah. Think of the, in the 20th century how many Cubs have lived their whole life and died without seeing a World Series victory. They don't even know what that is. But one person, I don't think he had a special dispensation from God. He was just blessed to live. And, and you know when you're when you you know your days are numbered. It, it, maybe it's hard to focus on on the temple, and I, I get it. But I remember saying to you, "Did you watch the World Series?" Yeah. I said, "Were you glad to see them win?" Yeah. You smiled. I mean, people that are not excited normally don't get any more excited when they're on medication. Though. But uh, to see a smile on the face that I talked about is we love Cubs. A 90 years long Cubs fan got to see a dream come true. But that's temporal. The Cubs, you know, are going to all retain the Brewers back, it doesn't matter. They're, they're, they are paying for a perishable crown. We are waiting for an imperishable crown of life that will receive in Christ. The, the reason why I shared it because all of these people from Abraham on, in fact, you can make a case back to Adam and Eve, longing for God to fulfill his promise to send a Savior. Many of them died, but they, they did not lose out. But this righteous, devout man was so much like many of those people in so many ways, waiting for the consolation of Israel, waiting for God to send his son. You know what? I mentioned before about waiting. All this time that we cannot get back, all the time we've wasted in line. And, and we've wasted enough on our own even without being in line, right? But time spent waiting on the Lord is not time wasted. Yearning for that day when Christ will come again in the glorious Father. So in many ways, we need to be like Simeon, waiting for the consolation, waiting for redemption, waiting for that day when Christ will come, not as a baby, to hold in our arms, but as King of kings, before whom every knee will bow, and to whom every tongue will confess that he is Lord. 
So Simeon was righteous and he was devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Oh, how we could learn from him and this Anna. Isn't it interesting? There's two, two people are mentioned. Elderly people. I don't know if God has worked with elderly people. So if you're above a certain age, I don't want to throw out a number yet. You figure that out. That's between you and God. That your best days are not behind you. Your best days may be ahead. Because here God has two elderly people. Simeon. I wouldn't even guess at his age. I'm not even sure I'd want to guess it at um, the age of Atticus. It says she was married for seven years for her virginity. That doesn't tell me how old she was. She got the or whatever. But she had been married and she was widowed until she was 84. Or uh, she was, other translations say she was widowed for 84 years. Whatever the age, it puts her out there in year. And what is interesting is that God had Simeon and Anna at the temple at the time the child was brought for the purification, according to the law of Moses. Well, why is that? Not to think that we can look this over in the Old Testament, the laws of Moses. And here they are to fulfill those laws. According to the law of Moses, a fact will be established the testimony of, of two witnesses, so established two to three witnesses. Well, here you could make a case you had the witness of the shepherd, I suppose, but here in the temple, Simeon and Anna, testify to breathe, is led by the Holy Spirit to confess that this is the law of the way to the Messiah. But I love, I love Simeon's prayer. But I love it here. This man waited all these years. He's promised he's not going to die until he sees the Lord's anointed. Now he holds that child without just imagine what was flooding for his soul. Just imagine what was going through his mind. You know, psychologists say that every day 10,000 thoughts go through our mind. I think that some days they're wrong. I think it's like 20,000. But imagine the thoughts of what through Simeon's mind to tell his child. And, and I'm sure there are tears of joy as he held his child. He really, he prays, Lord, I, Lord, now let the servant depart and let you support the Lord. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Which you have prepared the sight of all people, a light to light the Gentiles and the glory of your people in Israel. God, it, it, it's time. I'm ready to go. He had seen the Lord's night. There was nothing more to hold him. He was ready for a peaceful departure. May God, the, the Holy Spirit, put our hearts steadfast in Christ. So when that time comes, whether God calls us in death, before or after the World Series, by the way, whether He calls us in death, or he comes again at the end days that you and I are ready to have in Christ a peaceful departure. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus with the life of the last day. Amen. We're going to call the ushers at this time. I know you're down to your very last Pablo uh, for 2018. Don't despair because we have your 2019 envelope for you as well. And if you didn't take yours, they're on the table in the back. Please take us. Let's worship God with our tithes and offerings. <laughs>
morning in our prayers, we want to bring the court, God's court of grace. Scott Lorenz has been hospitalized in Madison since Wednesday. This week, he was supposed to be released yesterday. Uh, it's still questionable today. So let's pray for Scott, but also for his family at this difficult time. Uh, if you would kindly take your hymn book and turn to page 265 in the front of the hymnal. Page 265, we'll use that prayer on the church printed there with the responses. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. With the gift of divine peace and part with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. With the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and with the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the sick and dying, for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord this morning, Lord, we bring before you the word of grace, Scott Moran, hospitalized in Madison. We pray for healing, for grace, for strength. We pray for grace not only for Scott, but for Amber and the, the children. We pray that you keep them your care, that in your work, your perfect will in his life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in my life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and always. Amen. Amen.